One of the big dilemmas for urologists is a patient who they face with an elevated PSA and a biopsy has been done and that biopsy is totally benign. That PSA remains elevated and the next year that patient comes back to see the physician and a decision has to be made whether or not to repeat the biopsy, which is often the case. In fact, studies in big data sets have shown that in men with an elevated PSA and a negative biopsy, which represents somewhere in the neighborhood of 800,000 cases a year, that about 40% of those will go on to have repeat biopsy. And of those repeat biopsies, only about 25% are positive. Again, suggesting that the vast majority of our prostate biopsies are negative. However, we know because of sampling issues that prostate biopsy itself can miss significant cancers, even high-grade significant cancers. And therefore, it leaves us with this dilemma on should we continue to pursue repeat biopsies, perhaps subjecting our patients to risk of complications and increased anxiety, or do we continue to biopsy them over and over, hoping to try to find that missed significant cancer that might progress if we don't diagnose it? Now there are tests available for the, the clinician in, faced with such a dilemma to help them decide whether or not a patient is a better candidate for repeat biopsy or not. The first marker that was FDA approved for this was the urine test Progenza or PCA3. That test um, <clears throat> has been recently sold to another company and its availability going forward is uncertain. However, should it be still available, that is an option that can be used by uh, physicians. Another option is to look at the tissue that was removed from the initial biopsy. That test was already done. You performed a biopsy, and with that negative biopsy, we might be able to glean additional information from it that the pathologist could not see with his eye under the microscope. Such field effects, or what we call malignancy-associated changes, could be identified in, in benign tissue that would help us to choose those patients who are more likely to have cancer on repeat biopsy from those that are not. One such test that has been marketed by MDX Health is the Confirm MDX test. This test looks at methylation of three key genes seen in prostate cancer. GSTP1 is one, and two tumor suppressor genes, APC and RASF1. These are multiplexed in a PCR reaction, and it measures the total degree of methylation of these three genes. For a test to be positive, methylation of any one of those genes in any negative core taken from the patient indicates a positive test. And a positive test would have a higher likelihood of having cancer upon repeat biopsy than if they're all negative. Importantly, the negative predictive value for the Confirm MDX test is on the order of about 90%, suggesting that if you have a negative MDX or Confirm MDX test, that you are 90% sure unlikely to have cancer upon repeat biopsy. This is a good tool to help stratify those patients who are best to go on to repeat biopsy and those that we could avoid unnecessary biopsy.